Hello guys, welcome to another nerd rant. And this day is the worst day of October yet. Car broke, it's still Oktoberfest in town, and this dude wants to talk about Dobbs. That's true, I want to talk about Dobbs. Out of all contexts, why Dobbs? Because I am at the point where I want to go into Dobbs with my adding Houdini to your arsenal yeah. course. And that's why my focus shifted to Dobbs again. And Not what did, for the first time. And what did you discover this time? I discovered that Dobbs is quite weird. That would tell me about it. This is the guy who really is ranting about Dobbs all the time. I hate it. He he wants Dobbs inside of Sobs. Yeah. And I think a lot of people want yeah. Dobbs inside of yeah, Sobs. Yeah, I want, I want Dobbs gone. It's just confusing. And But that's not true. You you, you do have the Sob Solver. Yeah. Um, but as you probably know, the Sob Solver is just a packaged up Dobbs yeah. <laughs> inside of Sobs. So it's even more convoluted um, but as I agree it's a lot easier to do dynamics directly in SOPs but at the same time it's not that flexible and for the really complex and uh, difficult stuff that that is just I think it gets quite complicated if you do it in SOPs might be and I think that is the case because Houdini is a very geometry centric program mm -hmm. of course you have the object context mm -hmm. But um, a lot of things that you do in other 3D programs with objects, you're doing in Houdini with geometry. Mm -hmm. And for dynamics, you need objects. Because what you, what you are trying to do is to calculate the position, scale, and rotation of individual objects, right? And in, inside of Houdini, you have geometry. So mm -hmm. inside of SOPs, you have geometry. And it's already quite complicated if you have to keep track of the, all the individual centers of, say, cubes that you want to yeah. copy on a, on a grid and then move yeah. afterwards. Now with pack primitives, that's easier. But pack primitives are sort of objects. <laughs> yes, in a way. In a way. Um, and they are instances, so mm -hmm. that's not a real object. So I think DOPS is the way it is. Because it is a multi-object environment. <coughs> inside of a single inside of a single object environment. Basically. Because you can add a dot <laughs> well, network inside of the sub network. Well, hooray for the architecture then. Yeah, I think, yeah. As a disclaimer, I have no clue about what I'm saying here. <laughs> It's just what I what I'm reasoning about DOPS. I I had a look at it, yeah. I read the manual, I tried stuff out, I watched tutorials. And I came up with my ideas why DOPS is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And what I found is, well, the first thing is, um, it is a multi-object environment. Mm -hmm. To do dynamics, you need different objects. Yeah. And to handle different objects in SOPs, you need loops. And in DOPS, you don't need loops. Because you, you don't have this classical execution order there, mm -hmm. where you have one node executing and then the next node executing. But what you're doing inside of DOPS is you have sort of a scene description. So the nodes are not executing something, but they are creating a scene description in the background. Mm -hmm. Imagine this to be a process like firing up a text editor and writing down a JSON document. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. And then the DOP network is executing the scene. Do you remember Poffray yeah. from, from the 90s? My first render engine. Yeah, it used to be a free and great render engine yeah. because it was capable of doing ray tracing. And radiosity. Not really. Jesus Christ. But this stuff. took decades. Uh, to render, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, but that's another topic. But Poffray worked like this. Yeah. You, you just created a scene description through text and then opened Poffray through the command line with this scene description. Mm -hmm. Poffray parsed the text file and then did a thing. Mm -hmm. So if it found, say, a primitive sphere in the scene description, it created a primitive sphere. Yeah. And I think... DOPS is working quite similarly. Mm -hmm. so, so basically you have dynamic objects in, in DOPS and then all the nodes attach data to these objects mm -hmm. and data can be anything, a force or a solver. The solver says which solver to use to solve the object and then the DOP network executes as a whole. So it is capable of, of, of resolving all the complicated relationships between the individual objects because it executes all at once. Mm -hmm. If you're doing this on a per-object basis in SOPs, 
that's complicated yeah. because you, you have to keep everything in sync. And I think that's another reason for DOPS being as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So it's not an execution graph. That is what you told me. But a, a scene graph, basically. What was the beep? That was my Casio watch. Okay, good. I was just scared it was a camera. No, no, no. It was, it was my Casio okay. watch. You, you hear this a lot in my tutorials, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, apart from the watch. So, so you're saying that DOPS is not an execution graph, actually. No. It's just the, the notes are just there to add little snippets of scene description code to the scene description inside uh -huh. of DOPS. And um, that means that the entire DOP network is basically a sub node. That's my reasoning. Yeah, but then again, with this reasoning, it wouldn't matter in which order or in which in which order you put together your DOP net inside the DOP node. And it it doesn't matter always. In the yeah, network. not always, but at a certain point it does. Yeah, of course. What I want to explain is that there is a reason for DOPs being the way it is. Okay. And of course you have to learn it. <laughs> Yeah, of course you have to learn it, but I mean... It's not that complicated. Inside of DOPS, you have two streams. You have the gray world and the green world. Mm -hmm. The and gray the port is telling the nodes on which op objects to operate, because you have a lot of objects. Mm -hmm. So this gray stream is just a list of objects. Mm -hmm. If you have just one RBD object, then this one RBD object is traveling through this gray wire from node to node to node to node. And all the other nodes know that they should add their package, their data, data that they want to add to this object and this object only. Mm -hmm. Then you can merge in another object. Mm -hmm. Then you have two objects traveling down this wire. So it really doesn't matter if you put a gravity node in front of the solver or after the solver because it's just adding a gravity to the scene description. And the solver is not executing this stuff as far as I understand mm -hmm. it, but the DOP network is. So it's just... It, ju it just matters how the scene description looks when it is executed. And it is first parsed and then executed. So it doesn't matter if you put it down there or up there. But it, it does matter if you put it in front of the merge of the two objects or uh, beneath it. Because beneath it, it will affect both objects. And in front of the merge, it will just affect one object. Because then the gray stream only contains one object. It's, it's like a Python dictionary where you just add stuff to the dictionary or a Python list. So you can, you know, see so you're comparing this to the worst things Jesus. that I think that, that exist in, in, in computer science. No, one thing is totally clear. DOPS is not for you. No, but maybe for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that it's not that bad. If you try to understand why it is the way it is, I mean, it, it gets even worse because what I'm explaining now is just RBDs. Yeah. When when DOPS was invented, then they, they created RBDs, so the RBD solver and RBD objects, and the, the whole task of the thing was to calculate the transformation of individual objects. But yeah, for me, that makes stuff clear. So the entire DOP object, I see it as if it is just a SOP in charge of calculating the transforms of individual objects. So if I have a lot of objects, put them into DOPS, then I can calculate <laughs> the, the transforms. And after the, this one subnode, the DOP network, I have these transforms as data, and then I can put them on my geometry if I want to. So it's a, it's a lot like the, the, the iterated function system node. How is it called? L system. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a very complicated SOP. And to tell the SOP what to do, you have a language, a scene yeah. description. So, or a wrangle, where you have Vex code to, to tell the, the, the SOP what mm -hmm. to do. And like this, inside of DOPS, you just use another language to tell the node how to execute. But I think that is uh, the vital point to understand that not the nodes inside of DOPS are executing, but the DOPnet as a whole is okay. executing. And I'm not totally sure if it's technically the solver node that I'm executing. Could be the case. I don't know. But it is definitely not the data nodes because these are just used to add data. Hmm. So what you have basically is you just have an, a, an empty object that is defining a DOP object. The DOP object is just a data container. It's telling the computer here is a memory space where you have some data mm -hmm. that you can use for the solver. Mm -hmm. And then you can put, you can augment this data with data for a specific solver. So for example, a bullet solver needs different data than the RBD solver of Houdini. Mm -hmm. You can put it on. And then you put 
just an entry in a table where you say which forward to use, mm -hmm. for example, bullet. Mm -hmm. And then the entire, the entire dot network knows, okay, this object has to be solved with bullet. Do I have the data? I have it. Okay, I read it. I do my thing and I write down the transform. And you can watch all this if you have a look at the details view, because there you see the scene description as if it were a, a text file. You have a, a tree-like structure on yeah. the left where you have all the entries, yeah. which is a lot like XML tags, yeah. basically, the hierarchical structure yeah. of data. Yeah. See, see, the comparisons it. get worse. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we started out with a JSON file in a, pre in a previous text, you compared it to HTML tags. Now, what did we have? We had Povray. Now yes, we're, yes, we're yes. back at the XML file. It so gets worse. Python. So this, the all, all this is just like, it's just a nightmare of computer science. It's just like the boring, shitty, crappy stuff in computer science. It's, it's just like Vex and Python. Vex is fast, but Python is flexible. And the same holds true for jobs. It's just very, very flexible like this. <sighs> But it gets even worse because that was just RBDs. And this structure is in place. It works like this since ever inside of Houdini. But then they decided to add fluid. And for fluid, they decided that it would be nice if you could customize the behavior of the solver. Because with RBDs, the solver is just a black box. Mm -hmm. It's a solver doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You can add different solvers, but that's it. You cannot do anything to the solver. So they, they thought about how to implement something that would allow for modifications at the solver level. Mm -hmm. So they invented something they called microsolvers. And because they invented them with fluids or with a gas solver, yeah. so with... Uh, yeah, Pyro, smoke. Smoke solver, basically. All these microsolvers are called gas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, go on. Just so it's not that these microsolvers have anything to do with gas. One of them is just doing oil integration. But they can be used for gas, and they were used for gas when they were invented. Uh -huh. And that's why they are all prefixed with gas. Uh -huh. And these microsolvers are actually nodes that get executed. They are completely different. Because they are, I'm not sure if they get executed technically, one after the next in the graph, because that's just technical details I don't know. I cannot reverse engineer them. Mm -hmm. But they behave as if they are really executed. Mm -hmm. And with these nodes, you can just create solvers. So they are a lot like VOPs. They are yeah. more like, but they are not like VOPs because VOPs are adding their code. And then the whole code bunch gets compiled and executed. Yeah. And these uh, microsolvers are pre-compiled. They work like ICE in, in soft image mm -hmm. worked. So it's pre-compiled functions that you can wire together to create more complex functions. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. Or Expresso in Sim4D or... Is, is there any advantage to this architecture, having these pre-compiled nodes? I have no clue. Okay. Probably it's faster. I think it's faster because uh, VEX, of course, is not as fast as pre-compiled C++, yeah. which yeah. is optimized. I think that is a reason for it being like that because then it's just fast. If you have a... I don't know, gas linear combination. It's just a mathematical operation on volumes. Yeah. Not only on volumes. You can use it to update data on particles too. Yeah. But um, it's just a mathematical node. So it's a mass node, basically. Yeah. A very convoluted mass node. See, that's the point. Now you're even admitting it. No, it is convoluted. But if you understand that these microsolvers are, again, something completely different, yeah. then it's a, a lot easier because you can at least separate between these gray world, the green world, and the purple world, where you have three distinct systems that have, don't have too much to do with each other. So the microsolvers are used to create solvers that are used in the other system of solvers. But it did, does not stop there. Because then they, I think it was with Houdini 13, they realized that it is not a good thing to have the particles in a separate context. Was that 13? I don't know. But they, everybody knows they brought the particles over. And the particles, the new particles, are implemented in VEX. <laughs> so the POPs inside of DOPS are a system like microsolvers. They allow for building the solver or the behavior on a very granular basis with nodes that get executed. Yeah. But these are wrangles, so WAP nodes. And all the behavior is defined by WAPs, which is good because WAPs are already great at dealing with a lot of geometry. But it is the, the next completely different system. 
So these these pops have really nothing to do with microsolvers and have nothing to do with the, with the, with all the other melt and self tops. They are something completely different. And um, the the good thing though is that this allows now for using VEX on all the other data too, because now you have VEX inside of DOPS. Yeah. I'm not too sure if you had VEX before, but okay. now you have easy access to VEX with just wrangle. Yep. You can put down a, a, a wrangle inside of DOPS and just yeah get data, do something to the data, set the data. So I think in theory it should be possible to write an entire fluid solver in VEX, but it is something different. So now you can decide, you can just use an object and a solver and some forces for your DOP system, or you can decide to write your own solver. And if you do so, then you can either use microsolvers to build your own solver, or you can use VEX to build your own solver, which is the case with grains, for example. Yeah. Because with grains, that's really the, the, the is, is that a thing in English, the crown of everything? <laughs> I have no clue that uh, translates well. The, the best thing it's, it's the there, peak of the it peak maybe. of everything the yeah. peak of, of convolutedness is grains because grains uses the dop system which uses the pop solver which is a standard dop solver like the rbd solver written in c plus plus but then the grains are implemented in vex and they only use the uh, I think the velocity integration step of the pop solver and everything okay. else yeah. is just deactivated. Mm -hmm. So the grain solver sets an internal attribute called is PVD. That's because grains is nothing but position-based dynamics. And then the pop solver understands that it should not execute. It just updates the velocities, I think. Other than that, it does not execute. But the, <laughs> the grain solver written in VEX is doing all the updates on the data. So that is really a little convoluted, but uh, that's how it works. So DOPS is just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for admitting this and thanks for listening to this nerd round. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>